Hey, what's up, everyone? It's Patrick, and welcome to my guide to quest The Light Within on RuneScape 3. On screen right now is everything you need to repair yourself as quest. The green text is the stuff you need. The white text are side notes and things I recommend. The red text is to identify untradeable items, which there are an unusual amount of them needed for this quest. There's going to be a slide right after this that explains where to get everything if needed, but most of these are obtained from previous quests. I would recommend checking your bank for them first, as I'm not surprised if they only let you have one. The only exception to this would be the light cores. These are obtained by killing shadow creatures, which are weak to fire spells and they can be found a bit west of the center of Prif. You can't miss them, they're right there behind a barrier. There are three different kinds, uh, Truthful, Blissful, or Manifest Shadows. It doesn't matter which one you kill, but each one has a chance of dropping a Shadow Core with its respective name. Then you convert these Shadow Cores using the Rift in the middle of the area for a roughly 1-4 chance of getting a Light Core. So you could probably expect to kill about 20 or 30 of them just to get three Light Cores. Also be aware that each Shadow Core has a different divination requirement to convert them. 71 for Truthful ones, 81 for for blissful and 91 for the manifest but it's fine assuming you only have the minimum requirement of 80 divination which is required for this quest anyways just focus on the truthful shadows this is the exact same list of stuff with additional white text explaining where to get everything feel free to pause if you need it as i'm gonna get into a quest now To start the quest, go to the area in the Ithil district of Prif shown by a yellow marker. You can get near there by teleporting with your crystal teleport seed or the Prif lodestone. Also, if you only have the regular crystal teleport seed instead of the attuned version and need to recharge it or even for later, the NPC that you speak to to start the quest is also the NPC that can recharge it. That item is very helpful and will probably be used quite a few times to help you get around. She is, however, a pretty major part of this quest, so it's pretty difficult to be able to keep track of her movements throughout, but you can probably find her here or some other place which I'll show you later when we go. Speak to a Lunid. Remember this name if you think you need to recharge your teleport seed later. I think you either speak to her or just use it on her. Anyways, to start the quest, select option 1, of course, then accept the quest. Go to the center of Prif, easily accessible using the lodestone. Climb up the stairs in the northeast corner and select options 1, 2, 3, 1, 3 and finish the dialogue. Or you can refer to what's written on the screen. This place is called the Tower of Voices, by the way, and up the stairs is the second location where you might find a Luna during the quest. Once again, the options are 1, 2, 3, 1, 3. Go to the Guthic Shrine by the Legends Guild. You can get near there using the Six Age Circuit Ring, Modified Diviner's Headwear, Cape of Legends, or Walk from the Arty Lodestone. Enter the excavated entrance if you're not already inside. Head east and get as close to Guthix as possible. Right click the enchanted key and choose rub. Speak to Guthix and select options 1 then 4. Go west along the most northern path. Try to look for a yellow Donya minimap. There's an NPC somewhere along there.
speak to Halunid and select options 1, 1, 2, 3, or refer to what's written on screen. Once again, the options are 1, 1, 2, 3. Head back to Guthix. Speak to Guthix and select options 2, then 1. Go back to Tower Voices. Climb up the stairs and select option 1, the light went in, and continue the dialogue upstairs. After dialogue, speak to everyone individually except Alunid. Arianwin should have given you Backstorian's journal. Read that and flip through the pages. Head to Leto, which you can easily teleport to by using the Crystal Teleport Seed. I'm also putting up a map of how you can get there from Tyrwin Lodestone. Equip the four pieces of the Exoskeleton outfit, so the headband, torso, legs, and bracers. Then investigate this well and select option one, yes. Attempt to pass Automaton MKV or MK5 and select chat options 4323. Three. It's also on screen. Once again, it's 4323. Three. When the Automaton moves out of the way, you can head into the next room and grab the Seren Shard to the west to get a Seren Shard Prudence in your inventory. Go to this area in Prif marked by yellow marker. You can use your Crystal Teleport Seed to teleport to the Kryrus District or walk from the Lodestone. Speak to Coden and select option 1, the light went in. He'll then tell you a story which is apparently boring and you have to try to stay awake. You'll see black bars closing in from the top and bottom. I assume it's supposed to be like your eyes. To stay awake, keep your eyes open, those black bars away. you see these random symbols come across your screen. Just click on those to stay awake. It's okay if you miss a few, just don't miss too many. At the end of the conversation, you receive a winter cup mushroom.
Goethe's error is shown by yellow marker. I'll show you how to get there from Lodestone since that's what I used, but apparently a Tearwind Quiver 3 or 4 can teleport you directly there. Anyways, go directly west from the Lodestone and go through the dense forest. Head south to the farming patch. Directly to the west, look for a blood cat mushroom that you can pick and do that. The mushroom is like bright red. Use either mushrooms you just got on the 6 dose grand defense potion to put both of them in there to create a new elixir. Now you need to find an active crystal tree. If you don't know, there are 8 possible crystal tree locations. You can't actually use the one in Prif for this one, by the way, so whatever, 7. Uh, but it can only be active in one location. The tricky part is finding out where. There's a teleport that you can use in the max scale garden to go directly there. The max scale garden does not require you to be maxed. You just need 199 to enter, but to use a teleport, you also need 94 wood cutting, as that's the requirement to chop the tree. You do not actually chop the tree for this quest, which is why it's a required level only to use a teleport but not for this quest if you have a friend that meets this requirement you can actually have them go do it to get the location for you you of course will just have to find another way to get there and make sure you're on their world as well you can also teleport there with a nature sentinel outfit if you have one the last resort is to do what i did pick one of the locations this one south of sears village courthouse is pretty easy to get to and hop worlds until you find an active one at that location different worlds do have different active locations the tree will always be here but you'll know the location is active because the tree will have spikes or shards on the ground around it and you have the option to chop it you know i just thought that method of getting another player to use the max scale garden to teleport to location right now as i'm making this video i literally have a different account that could have done it for me use the elixir revealment on the crystal tree shard and a hole should appear on the ground next to it enter the cave entrance Take the Saren Shard in the middle of the room to get a Saren Shard Harmony in your inventory. It may be a bit hard to see because it blends in with surroundings. Just refer to my video if you're having issues. Go to the Waterfall Dungeon. Now, if you're going there the normal way, I guess you can call it. Best thing to do would be use the game's necklace to teleport to Barbarian Outpost, then go to the spot shown by Yellow Marker. You need a rope and Glarial's Amulet for this method to get into the dungeon, and that's why that was on the item list in the beginning. I'll show you what to do in a minute if you don't know. However, there is a way to bypass this if you have either a Horde Stalker Ring or a Dungeoneering Cape to teleport to the Resource Dungeon there, as it will already take you inside the Waterfall Dungeon. The Horde Stalker Ring does require you to have unlocked the Resource Dungeon beforehand, as that one takes you inside the resource dungeon in which case you just exit for some reason the options are named differently for each item for dungeoneering cape is called the waterfall fire giant dungeon and for the horde stalker ring is called the backstorian falls this also saves you some walking time of course if you're going the normal way board this raft behind the house use the rope on the rock to the south to get across the water Use the rope on the dead tree to climb down, then put on your Glarial's amulet and enter the door. Regardless how you got in here, go into the room to the very east. Search the crate that's a different color from the rest to receive a key. Go to a room all the way in the northwest corner. Investigate the statue of King Backstorian to the north to get some dialogue and select options 2, then 4. Take the Saren Shard to receive a Saren Shard Integrity in your inventory. 
Head to the area to the north in the Heffen district of Prif. You can use the Crystal Teleport Seed or Lodestone to teleport near there. I would suggest watching me do this first before doing it yourself. When you enter the building, you'll get chat options. Select options one and two or refer to what's written on screen. By the way, if you mess up, you can click somewhere random to exit this. Then just click on the Saturn stone in the middle of the room and select the same chat options to get back. Basically, all you do is follow the poses that they do. They also say the name of the ones they're doing in case you can't tell based on the way they're positioned. Just pay attention and copy them as they do it. When you do it enough times correctly, that is, you get some dialogue where they'll give you words for an incantation. The incantation will not be the same for everyone and you won't have much time to write the whole thing down they don't even use real words so it's difficult to memorize so what i would suggest doing instead is to write down or memorize the first letter of each word that they tell you luckily the first letters are all unique then you get the chat options repeat the incantation using the chat options you then have to do this two more times so three incantations in total and following whatever or however many poses in between You should lose your three light cores and get another Saturn Stone exchange. Anyways, go back to Tower Voices. Climb up the stairs and select option one. The light went in to get a cutscene. Climb up the stairs one more time and select option one. The light went in. For the Saren Shard you have been collecting throughout the quest, you have to give each one to one of two people by using it on them. It doesn't matter which one of the two I wrote on screen which shard has to be given to who. Head to Morvran, the Slayer Master, in the Iowurf district. You can teleport there or just head down the stairs and walk a bit south. Speak to Morvran and select the option 1 Ask for access to the Grand Library. Go around to the west side of this area. Enter the door, head to the very southwest corner of this area. Take the Saren Shard in the corner and select option 1 to get a Saren Shard dark in your inventory. Once again, it may be a bit hard to see as it blends in with the surroundings. Just refer to my video if you're having trouble. Go back to Tower Voices. Climb up the stairs and select option 1, the light went in, and finish the dialogue. Once this is finished, I would highly recommend grabbing food from the bank downstairs. Do not get rid of anything though, but definitely pack out your inventory with food. Head to the World Gate from the Fae of the Gods quest. You can use a 6 age circuit ring to teleport there if you have that option, and the Eagle's Peak Lodestone can get you decently close as well. Rotate the controls in front of the world gate, whichever way doesn't matter, but you need to get the gate to show number one. I'm also throwing an image up on screen for reference. It looks exactly like this. Do not get thrown off by one that looks similar to it. That's not it. I don't care if you rotate it 10 times already and aren't seeing it because that's what happened to me. Trust me, it's there. I didn't pull this image out of nowhere. When you got it, enter the world gate and choose yes.
you now need to get 50 Tardian crystals or 150 crystal fragments. This can be done through various activities in the area. I'm listing all of them on screen. I'm not going to explain all of them to you because you only have to do one. And I would say go at fishing. That's what I did. It's pretty AF cable, so it's the most chill and it's apparently the fastest. The fishing spots are on the rock paths that go across the water, as in you actually have to stand on the actual path. If your fishing spots disappear, there should be one on the other rock path. You can see the fishing icons in minimap. The combat one sucks, by the way. Fighting the crystal shapeshifters are such a pain. I would not recommend that at all. The primary reason for the food is to heal yourself in case they attack you, but you can just run away. Make sure you do have the inventory space to collect either the crystal or the crystal fragments. They do stack, of course. This will probably take about 20 or 30 minutes. Once you have either the 50 crystals or 150 crystal fragments, head to this building in the same area shown by a yellow marker. If you have the fragments, they actually have to be converted to crystals, which can be done by right clicking Angoff, choose exchange shards and select option one. OK, now for everyone, once you have the 50 crystals, speak to Angoff and select options one, then five or refer to what's written on screen. Once again, the options are one and five. Head back to Tower Voices. Climb up the stairs and select option 1 to light went in, then go through dialogue and cutscene. Apparently, you can't actually skip the cutscene even though the option is there because they give you chat options during the cutscene. Whatever, just select option 1 for all the chat options. You'll be attacked by Muspas, just move around to avoid their attacks. You don't actually have to fight them, their attacks are not random either. They simply target where you are, so it's easily avoidable by just moving out of that spot and don't go back to the same spots you were just in too quickly. You do this until Zaros appears.
speak to Zeros. You now have to do is puzzle a total of four times. Don't worry, I do have all the solutions, but you still need to have a basic understanding of how to do this before I give that to you. You'll see these crystals around Saren. I want you to imagine them as forming three layers or three rings. I have it drawn out so it's easier to visualize, but it may also help to zoom your camera all the way out. And I also do know that without my drawing that they don't really form a circle like this whatsoever, but just try to imagine it. I'm going to call them the inner ring, which is the one closest to Saren, the middle ring, and the outer ring, which is the one furthest from Saren. And for each ring, you only have to touch one crystal when in it. The solution to the first puzzle is to rotate the inner ring anti-clockwise once. You can right click them to quickly get the options on which direction you want them to turn. Turn the middle ring anti-clockwise twice and then the outer ring clockwise twice. I'm also going to be putting up on screen the solutions as well as we do them. If you really can't make out the rings or in general you just don't get it then just try to copy where I click in the video. The placement of the crystal should be the same if everyone has the same solution. You know you did it right when all the crystals and lines glow and you get some dialogue from Saren. If you mess up you can click on her to reset it. Here is a solution for a second puzzle. You turn the inner ring anti-clockwise twice, middle ring clockwise once, and outer ring clockwise twice. Here's a solution for a third puzzle. You turn the inner ring anti-clockwise three times, middle ring anti-clockwise twice, and do not touch the outer ring. Here's a solution for the fourth puzzle. You turn the inner ring anti-clockwise twice, middle ring clockwise twice, and the outer ring anti-clockwise twice. There will be another cutscene and conversation with Saren after doing the fourth puzzle correctly. Just continue that and select option one for both chat options. You should be back at the Tower of Voices or just come here if not, assuming you didn't do anything wrong. You should bank everything before you go upstairs as you won't need the inventory spaces. Climb up the stairs and select the option one, the light went in. Continue the conversation and that will be end of the quest. By the way, they still let you finish even if you don't have the inventory spaces for all the rewards. You just have to climb down the stairs and come back up with free inventory spaces. Then talk to Saren again to get the rest of it. You don't have to select any chat options. Anyways, that's going to be end of the video. Hope you found it helpful. If you did, remember to like the video, subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell for future videos to come if you haven't already. Catch you later. Peace.